All right, can everybody hear me okay? Yes, you can, yes, you can. All right, I'm gonna start with a few easy questions. Who can tell me when the end of life for Magento 1 is? You get a hammer. All right. All right, who can tell me a three-letter acronym that stands for Progressive Web App? Somebody gets a hammer. All right, finally, very importantly, who can tell me who is the best college football team in the SEC? You get a hammer, and now at the end of the talk, when you were asked to evaluate the speakers, you can say that Aaron got you all hammered. Okay, so let's go forward on the talk here. Um, strategically migrating to Magento 2, uh, otherwise known as RFPs are fun, they're not. I'm just trying to make it feel better. Uh, RFPs are fun because of this, right? Who here has responded to an RFP before? Uh, yeah, okay. I, who here has been responsible for inflicting an RFP on someone else? Yeah, okay, all right, well, yeah. Okay. Meh. All right, RFPs are fine, right? This is fine, this is fine, it's totally fine. Um, nobody likes these, but I'm here to sell you on the idea of going through an RFP process when you're migrating from Magento 1 to Magento 2. And really, this would be good advice for any kind of replatform you're doing, because the point is to slow down, don't be in a hurry, and evaluate your business holistically to see the opportunity in front of you of moving from Magento 1 to Magento 2, not so much to think of it as I'm gonna right click on my file system and save as Magento 2 and then I'm done, not to think of it as this necessary expense that you have to pay, but to think of it as an opportunity to reevaluate your whole business and determine where it's appropriate for you to invest time and growth. So why would you be going through the, the hellish process of an RFP? First off, you're telling a story. You're telling a story to yourself, and it's actually really important to do because a lot of businesses, a lot of us, I think, come to work. We see our business as a series of things that we do when we come to work, and they're processes. They're independent processes. I do, I, I log into this screen, I place these orders, I fill these orders, I answer my customer service complaints and things like that. Tell the story of who you are, right? Sit down as a group and talk about what, is your, what makes your business successful, what makes your business unique right? Um, talk about what the outcomes are. At the end of your migration to Magento 2, and I'm not going to say upgrade. If I say upgrade, somebody please throw a hammer back at me. It's migration. Um, at the end of that process, you should have something better than what you had before, right? Because you're spending a lot of money on it, so one would hope that you're going to get better results. You're going to force internal communication and prioritization. I, I see this a lot um, with merchants that I work with where the warehouse team never talks to the marketing team, right? Why would they? There's, there's, there's no reason for them to do that necessarily. Um, but they both are stakeholders in a new Magento site or a new e-commerce site, right? Because there are going to be integrations with back office systems. There are going to be things that impact the marketing team that they're going to want out of it. They need to all sit in the room and somebody's going to have to make the decision corporately at the merchant site where the money is going to be spent, where the priorities are going to be. Um, and helping to have that conversation and do that prioritization is super critical towards having a good outcome here. Setting expectations internally and externally. Remember, you're writing the RFP for you, the merchant, but also for everybody who's going to read it. So you want to make it really clear, tell the story, what your expectations are. Do you have to be live by Black Friday, Cyber Monday? I hope not. Um, do you have to have an integration with an ERP system? Do you have to have um, an integration with a cool email service provider, right? Um, you need to set the expectations for everybody who's going to read this. Do you, require your, um, do you require the agency that's going to do the work to be based in a particular country, right? That's all stuff that you guys need to figure out before you go you know, signing licenses, expensive licenses, and then hiring developers. And you really want to find the very best partner for you, right? Why are you going through this process? Why are you going through all those spreadsheets and pivot tables and PowerPoints? You're doing it for a reason. So when are you going to do this? Well, you, 
probably already should have, honestly. But um, it's not too late. Um, you got until when? Okay, that was still pretty faint, but I think it was either June or July. I'm not sure. I'm hoping somebody from Adobe can tell me when I'm done. Um, I did a Twitter poll, very scientific, uh, about two months ago, asking people in the Magento community, how long does it take you to do a Magento 1 to Magento 2 migration? Uh, and I, know, I don't know who participated, but I'm assuming it was Magento people, um, merchants and agencies. And there were four options. The vast majority came in between three to nine months, right? I think one person said less than three months. If you're here in the room, I would really like to meet you. Um, I think a handful of people said more than nine months, sorry. And if I was responsible, I'm very sorry. Um, but most people fell in between three and nine months. Well, the average RFP process takes, I mean, it should take four to eight weeks. You can make it take longer. Take a lot of vacations. Um, don't answer people's emails for a while. Like, you can, you can draw the process out longer if you need to. Um, but you're not gonna get it done in less than four weeks, and that's pretty short. Um, and when are you gonna budget for 2020? Your CFO is probably like sending emails now, right now, saying we need to start, if they haven't already, plan for 2020. We need to, we've got, cap, Magento is this CapEx. Your CFO is like, oh, okay, I gotta, I'm gonna have to pay people to do a thing. Um, if that budget process is starting now, you better start getting estimates now, which means you need to start doing the RFP yesterday. Um, and then, oh, by the way, if you're looking at this, if you're doing the, the math backwards, the calendar math, and then date math is hard, right? Everybody, yeah, date math is hard. Um, effectively, you need to be starting uh, in about a week or two, starting this process, um, because probably people are gonna go on vacation for the holidays, right? Both the people internally at your office who are gonna be this part of the stakeholders and coming together with the requirements and also the agencies you're gonna send them to. I mean, we do, I you know, uh, uh, run a Magento agency and I do try to let people have off for Christmas, right? Like, there's no reason not to. Um, and so getting a response back from, hey, uh, on December the 20th, you, you drop an RFP in my inbox and say, hey, it has to be back by uh, New Year's Eve. It's not gonna get back to you by New Year's Eve. Like, dude, no. Um, probably not. So there's a five-step process, basically, that unfolds over that four to eight weeks. So the first step of the process is to write it. You have to start there. I think we all learned that in college when we tried really hard to pass classes without writing papers, and it didn't work. Um, you're telling a story, remember. You want to give context on what your goals are. You want to give context on what your objectives are. Again, you're telling a story. This is not RFP by spreadsheet. I am not at all advocating for the traditional RFP model where there are um, lots and lots and lots of big questions in Excel and little tiny you know, places to actually put answers, right? Those, those suck. You want to first tell a story. And so you want to express your goals and objectives. Um, I have heard for three years that Magento 2 is faster than Magento 1 and by upgrading or migrating to Magento 2, my conversion rate will go up because I'm, just because I'm on Magento 2, if I change nothing and I was just on Magento 2, I will suddenly make all this money, right? I get this in RFPs, people, people have, this, have this belief. Um, and so you'll say, what is the objective for your migration? Well, I want my site faster. Okay, how, right? If you're going to put that as an objective, you need to be able to measure that because you're gonna hold your developer accountable for some kind of performance metric. Page load time, time to first byte, time to first meaningful paint, time to interactive. Uh, indexing time, is it actually when you're talking performance, it's because you, you're sucking in flat files uh, every night and the indexer takes eight hours to run because you've got two million SKUs? Is that the performance you mean? Be specific about what you're looking for if you're running the RFP and you're setting out a goal that you're going to hold someone accountable for. If you're not gonna hold somebody accountable for, whatever, put whatever you want to, right? But if you are going to be bad at somebody, if the site doesn't perform the way you want it to, be specific about those goals. Um, this part is very specific for Magento 1, and I've, you've heard this, some of you have probably been in the talks by Josh Ward and TJ Gamble, who I think all sort of hit on this. Magento 1, I mean, a lot of us have been running sites for a very long time on Magento 1, and we have cruft. There's a lot of extensions. There's a lot of $29 extensions that were installed because someone would like 
was drinking at 2 a.m. and then went to the marketplace and was like, I want that. I want sparkles on my layered navigation. You need to go reevaluate that stuff and figure out, like, do we really need it? Is it a must have? Is it a, I'd like to have that? Is it a, uh, be nice to have, the budget's there, but it's not critical. Um, list it all out. Go forth and do an autopsy on your Magento One site and find out every place where somebody went and installed something. Um, any kind of integrations that you have, third party service providers, get a list of all that together. And then your team needs to go through and evaluate whether or not those are useful. How are you gonna do that? The guy in the warehouse, right? The marketing person, the CFO, the e-commerce, the customer service manager, they probably, or their predecessor, or their predecessor's predecessor had a reason, a business reason for installing that extension or doing that customization or performing that integration. What were those reasons and are they still valid today? Go through that process. You need to answer those questions. You don't want to try to answer those questions when the meter is running on a license. You, you don't. You want to answer them up front. Um, you also want to talk about, in your RFP, housekeeping. What format do you want your RFP? And this is boring, nobody cares, it's PDF or DocX or whatever, but you should, if you have expectations around how you wanna get this back from the agencies, tell them, what's the timeline? You've got one week to give me questions and two weeks to turn around a proposal. Otherwise, you're gonna get stragglers, you're gonna get people who went on vacation, and you're, still gonna, you're gonna drag your RFP process out for months because if you don't set clear expectations, they're not gonna get followed. Um, very important here, internal capabilities. This comes up a lot, weirdly for me, post-sale, um, where someone will say, oh yeah, by the way, we have a developer um, and we think that they can contribute to this project. Okay, does your developer have experience with Magento too? No. Okay. Um, how are they gonna push code? Are they gonna give us pull requests? Are, uh, are they gonna handle all of the merges and deployments themselves? Um, what are they gonna be responsible for relative to the scope of work that we signed? Figure all that stuff out up front, like before you write your RFP. Um, is, do you have your own creative team that's gonna be generating wireframes or full color comps? That's kind of stuff that, it saves you money potentially because it's your employees doing the work, so you're not paying a contractor to do the work, but tell the agencies to whom you are distributing the RFP who you're bringing to the party, right? Because that's important for them. Um, and lastly, I say provide budget, and this is tricky. Um, there's a, I think there's a belief that if you in an RFP as a merchant give an agency a budget, the proposal you get back is going to, hey, magically be exactly that budget. And so that if you, if you sort of like just omit talking about money, just don't pretend it's not a thing, then you'll get honest bids from everybody. That may or may not actually be true, but it probably isn't. That's probably lie number 10 from the previous presentation. Um, provide your budget. That way, agencies who are responding, they know what it takes, what they pay their people. They know what their cost basis is for doing work. Um, you know, if it's not a fit for them, if they can't deliver what you need in the budget that you have specified, you're wasting their time and they're wasting your time, right? You, you wanna narrow the list of respondents. You wanna send that RFP out to a lot of people, but you wanna be really clear what, what your expectations are. Um, it should be pretty obvious when someone is larding up their proposal to you with extra stuff, because you're gonna get a bunch of proposals back at the end of it, and everything's gonna have rates and number of hours in it, in all likelihood. You can do a comparison and you can see pretty quickly who thinks it's gonna take 2,000 hours versus who's gonna, who thinks it's gonna take 1,000 hours. If, so, if one agency says 3,000 hours and everybody else says 600, it's gonna stand out. So provide budget. It just saves everybody a lot of time. So writing is the hard part, obviously. You need to distribute your RFP and uh, manage the process. Um, step one would be to find SIs, a term that um, I'm not super fond of. Um, it stands for solution integrators. I don't know why we don't just say agencies. Um, yeah, yeah, right? Amen? <laughs> um, go to the Magento Partner Portal. You can do a lot of sorting and filtering there, find certified Magento partners of different levels. Um, 
in different areas of the world with different numbers of Magento 2 certifications. That's all important. Um, I highly recommend you to stay with agencies who are certified by Magento in some way. Um, that's some bias because I represent one of them, but it is true that Magento is a complex piece of enterprise software, and if you don't spend a fair amount of time self-educating yourself on it um, and training your developers on it, it's hard to deliver consistent results. Um, talk around the room, right? There are a lot of other merchants here who have gone through Magento too. They may have recommendations on who you should go with. They may tell you people to avoid. Um, go to shows and conferences. Um, you will find that um, most merchants, and I'm saying talk to merchants, talk to other people who are in your shoes, right? Um, they will tell you who to talk to and who not to talk to. Ask around, get that list together, and take your RFP and e-blast it to at least three to five people. More than that, and you, you risk getting just inundated in proposals because you're, you know, you're gonna get back a thing like this, a you know, proposal from each one of them, but you want at least three, right? You wanna, you wanna at least have a, some, some competition with your, competition's good. You want competition in your RFP responses. And then you're gonna want to manage it. You're gonna wanna manage the question and answer piece of it. What's typical is um, you give everybody who receives the RFP like a week to respond to questions, and everybody sends their questions into you, and then you go deduplicate, collate them, write responses, and take the combined answers and send them back out to everybody. So it's fair, so one partner doesn't have privileged information that another one doesn't, right? You wanna keep things equitable. If somebody asked a really good question that somebody else didn't, share that answer out with, with everyone. So now comes the fun part. You've done all your work and the responding agencies have done all of their work. So you know at this point um, what your story is, you know, why you're important as a business, and what is important, what you're trying to get out of your Magento 2 site. You know that what your requirements are, you've listed them out. You now have people saying, I can do all those things, right? And here's how much it's going to cost you. And here's information about us, and we were founded, and blah, 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 and we're in blah, 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 and we're the best ever. Okay, you're gonna get a lot of that. Um, when you're evaluating the proposals, like I said before, take a look at the Magento certifications, take a look at their partner level, take a look at the, the team size if they talk about it, ask that question if it's not provided. Um, you know, is this two people in a garage? You can get good work out of two people in a garage, but you need to know because if they have three other clients and you're number four, then, you know, that could be a challenge for you. Um, take a look at examples of their, of their work. Do they have references? Do they have other sites that they've built? Can you click on them? Do they work? Um, do they 404 when you try to go to them? That would be a good sign. Um, rate and payment terms, all important. And really, honestly, when you read the proposal, do you feel like they heard you? Like when you told that story of who you were as a merchant, why you were important, why your customers mattered to you, and you read the response, do you feel like the person writing it actually read your RFP, or do you, think, do you feel like you just got a, a canned RFP response that came out of the copier. That's very critical. Um, you want to make it, you want to know that the other person is paying attention to you because you went to a lot of work. We're running out of time, so I'm gonna just like zoom through the last few slides here. Um, you wanna narrow the field, this is step four. You've got your responses back. You wanna go from five to three, or four to two, or something like that. You're gonna schedule calls, you're gonna schedule in-person meetings. You're gonna evaluate them for their cultural fit, their technical chops. Um, if you're looking for more than just development, a lot of times you're looking for someone to do um, digital marketing or SEO or creative services or photography or videography or anything. If they offer those services, maybe that's a compelling point um, on their behalf. How do they handle problems? I love getting asked this question, weirdly, um, because it's a great example to talk about the human side of the business. Ask that question, there are gonna be problems. It's gonna come up. Like you're gonna have um, something takes longer than you want it to. It's gonna take longer than the developer said it was gonna, gonna take. Um, what's their response gonna be? How do, they, how do they work through that? Those are good questions to ask before you sign. You're gonna select, you're gonna license. If you're, if you're with uh, Magento Commerce Cloud and not open source, there's licensing considerations there as well for hosting 
any kind of third party licensing, now you're gonna get into the lifetime to spend money part of the RFP process. Uh, and you're gonna do your kickoff process and you're gonna handle the boring finance stuff that everybody deals with, but I try to avoid personally. So, um, those are the five steps of the RFP process. Rob, how am I doing on time? A couple more minutes, okay, so enough time for questions. So, does anyone have any questions? Question in the back. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna restate the question the way I think I heard it, which is, if you're a merchant who has Magento 1 developers, what's the best way to integrate them into the Magento 2 migration project? And afterwards. And afterwards, to take over. Yes, okay. Um, yeah, this comes up a lot. Um, first, I steer them towards Magento University. I try to get them to take courses and certifications and say, hey, get them start educating your developers early on Magento 2. There are courses and certifications they can take. Um, if, they're, if they're willing and able to do it, that's actually a really good asset for everybody involved. I love, love, love having technical stakeholders on the merchant side who can both represent the business, the business need and also contribute to the code base. That's actually a net lift for me, right? Um, so as far as that goes, I would say make sure that it's in their plan, the merchant's plan, to train those guys. Make sure there's budget and time, right, for those people to be trained, because you can't, as a Magento 1 developer, just pick up a Magento 2 code base and start writing PHP. I mean, I guess you can. I don't recommend it. Uh, I would say do some education first. And then come up with a way of who's gonna handle rules of the road for deployments, right? Like, you gotta figure out, like if they're self-hosting, for instance, and this, their developer team is the one with root on the box and they do all of the deployments, then that, you know, you need to sort of like make the agency aware of that so they don't put you on managed hosting or somewhere else or an automated process somewhere else, right? So it's, it's thinking through that stuff and making sure that the Magento 1 developers are trained and exposed and just helping the merchant manage the risk, I would say, of understanding like if their guys are starting to slow the project down, communicate that, be ready to receive that message. If, if it's going really well, talk about that. Did I answer your question? Okay. Anybody else? Well, it depends on the definition of the word detailed. Um, I like getting detailed requirements um, early on in an RFP. Um, the concern that I have often is that there is there often the appearance of detail, but not actually uh, detail, right? And so. Um, detailed requirements are really good if you have the time to put them together. Um, and you should collaborate with the agencies who are responding to your RFP. You should see at least some thought in their response to your, to your requirements. For instance, if you say, um, I need to integrate with my order management system and it's a green screen AS400, it lives in the basement, everybody hates it, and uh, it's responsible for inventory, pricing, and SKU, right? Um, you should see something in your RFP that says, okay, you said this was a requirement, here's how we're going to do it. Or you should get a question, honestly, earlier on that says, can you accept flat files? Do you have a web server like running in, uh, that I can, with API endpoints, can you hit the Magento API? And you're gonna say, no, it's an AS400, what are you talking about? Like, you know, somebody goes down there and hand types every order into it every night, like, that's how we operate. But in the responses, you should actually get some detailed requirements or detailed solutions back. Our, our goal as agencies is to provide detailed solutions for vague requirements. So if you give me detailed requirements, I will give you a detailed solution back. But it's not on you necessarily to have to do that in great, great depth and don't get caught into analysis paralysis where you, the effort to fully quantify all your requirements you know, sucks all the oxygen out of the room for your project. Uh-huh. 
Got it. Well, so you, the RFP process is a really good process to go through. You can also just start asking other merchants who are in similar spaces, a similar space as you. What did they spend? This, con this conference is a great place to do it. There are lots of others. Where in the, where in the world are you? White Plains. White Plains, okay. Okay, they don't have to be in your same vertical necessarily, but talk to other merchants who've gone through it and talk to them about how many products you have, what kind of integrations you have, how custom your front end is or how custom you feel your front end is. And you can get general ranges. Uh, if, meet with me afterwards, I'll give you my general range as an agency, but there are lots of other SIs here. Everybody here who's with an agency, raise your hand. Magento agency people, there are a lot of you. Okay, look around, talk to those people at your own peril. Any other questions? Am I about to get the hook? Getting the hook. All right. Thanks, guys. It's been fun.